escape man's mind simply because man has a tendency to like to do things his way. We're in some perilous times. Amen. And lawlessness is on every turn. You have found that People talk about how bad things are getting, but they just talk. Amen. Right? Amen. I've never seen talkers solve anything. No. No. There's there's things that are going on in the earth realm that people die that we might have a voice, mm -hmm. such as Jesus. Amen. Jesus died that we might have a voice. My subject this morning is still God's process of salvation. God's method of salvation, but I want to give it to you through a subject called manifold wisdom. Manifold wisdom is just where you don't always look back at what you was, thinking what you was is better than what you could be. Let me say that one more time. There are people that always look back that think that that life back right there was better than what I got right now. Mm -hmm. But that's not the process that God made. God made a process that we were, as we live from day to day, we were to evolve to become better. Amen. That we were to transform by the renewing of our mind to do better. Amen. That we will learn the minuses and make them more pluses. Mm -hmm. So Jesus died that we may have manifold wisdom. And manifold wisdom is where you grab hold to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and you grow. Mm -hmm. Learning what mistakes you made that didn't work. And adding new things to transform to grow by. Amen. You ever met them people you used to go to school with? People you used to hang out with at the club? And every time they see you, their conversation is about what we used to be. They ain't got nothing. They ain't got nothing new. I'm here, whole old rusty man, and you still want to look back when I was 18? <laughs> go ahead. No, I don't want to go to your family reunions and your 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 your, your class reunions because that's all that is about is looking right. back, right. back. Right. to what it used to be, mm -hmm. and I have to tell them every now and then. Wait a minute. What you relating to no more? Yeah. I'm not that. No. I'm not that person no more. Right. Number one is my life been changed. Right. See, so the manifold wisdom of God. Paul talks about the manifold wisdom of God in Colossians one nine. Mm -hmm. And the manifold wisdom of God is simply this: it eludes man, you know, manifold wisdom of God. But, but the manifold wisdom of God is this. God has given us so much treasures yes. that we ain't got to be the same. No. no way. We can change from one day to the next. Mm -hmm. It's called transforming. Amen. Amen. But see, now, Kevin, if, if I'm a Christian and you're a Christian and, and I don't never practice my Christianity, but I stand over here to myself and I and I practice my Christianity over here, when I turn to the east, I'm going to be looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. When I turn to the west, I'm going to be looking pretty good. North, east, south, or west, I'm going to be looking pretty good because I ain't got nobody to compare my Christianity to but me. Amen. I ain't got nobody to practice my Christianity on but me, so I make a facade in my mind. Yeah. Then I'm all right. Mm -hmm. 
That's where man biggest blow scratching. Yeah. That's where Satan blinding him at. Is a man always stand up and say, I'm all right. But see, we won't never to compare ourselves to ourselves. See, Christianity is about the fullness. Christianity is not about religion. Christianity is about the fullness of God's plan. Yes, see, man. see, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the Bible. I'm going to the Bible, but I, I want to set the foundation. See, Christianity is about you understanding that the ultimate plan of God was John 3.16, that he was going to send his son, and his son came to the earth and said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just brought another one in there. So Jesus, so God sent his only begotten son, and Jesus said, John 14, that I must go, this manifold wisdom, that I must go that I may see him. So we got a trinity working. We got three gods working on the earth as it is in heaven. Yes, oh yes. We got God's plan, the son acting it out, and the Holy Spirit revealing it. Uh -huh. So see, I ain't got to worry about whether or not I'm looking for Travis when I look at myself in the mirror. I ain't looking for Travis when I look at myself in the mirror. Because if I'm still Travis, then I can go to the class for you. That's right. But see, I ain't Travis no more. I'm a new creation. Amen. I attach myself that I'm made from the weaponship of Jesus Christ. Jesus. I came oh, with a work to walk worthy of. And so, therefore, when I attach myself to what God says I am, I got manifold wisdom. I got manifold treasures. I got manifold promises. And I am who God says I am. So, therefore, I see life not according to what fleshly Travis would see life through. I see life through what God called me to be and the way he wants me to see life through. Yeah. So when God asks me what I see, I don't tell him my class reunion when I was 18. I tell him I see, Lord, what you see. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. So when you look at the passage, Paul speaking, talking about manifold wisdom, and that's comprehending uniting various speeches and information that you may grow your mind by, that you may become what God wants you to become. Amen. See, because God is the highest IQ in the land. Oh, yes. Once you can learn to see things the way God sees it, you can see things before it happens. Right. See, you can see that spirit when it come in the door. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. You can see, you can feel when Satan has entered in and it's going to cause havoc, you will prepare before it get there. Amen. But what man does is man is so blinded right. that man let life come to him when he wakes up in the morning. Go ahead. How you feel today? I, I feel all right. How did God say you feel? Well, I ain't want to talk about that right now. Mm. We've got things going on in the earth, real. And I'm all in now, the man said on TikTok. He said, I'm all in now. See, because I realized that God's ultimate plan was called the church. Yeah. Now, if God got in another ultimate plan throughout Genesis to Revelation, you tell me and I'll sit down. But God's ultimate plan was called the church. Amen. And it was Jesus that handed the church its authority. And I don't know how you're going to be a part of the church unless you attach to the true vine and be a branch that's producing fruit. Amen. I don't understand how you're going to get to God when he say I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way that to my father is through me. I don't understand how you're going to have religion and Christianity too with what God is doing, with what Jesus is doing, with what the Holy Spirit is doing, and what the Word is leading us to understand that i got to be in Christianity. So you got the theologians, you got the denominations, you got the Catholics, and you got the Jehovah's Witnesses, you got the Seventh-day Adventists, and you got the Methodists, 
and everybody got a doctrine, but there ain't but one in the universe. That's the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And if you ain't gonna be a part of that, you ain't got a chance. Because that's God's plan of salvation. Amen. You say, where are you going with this, preacher? Here's where I'm going with this. When you look at John 3, 16, you said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Let's have, let's have manifold wisdom. Let's add to our wisdom today. Manifold wisdom means we're going to add to what we were when we came in here. So when we leave out, we have more. Uh, we'll look at it from various features that we may get the treasures out of what I'm giving you. Yeah. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You ever stop to think that you can study Moses, Noah, you can study Boaz, you can study Ruth, but you can't get the Trinity from none of them. No, you, can't. you can't get the Holy Spirit from none of them. No. You can't even become the church where the gates of hell will not prevail in none of their right. Uh -huh. If you're going to waste your time and you want to read the Bible five times, read the Bible five times. But I'm still going to ask you the question, what, have you got the Trinity? Paul said, I didn't come baptizing with water, but I came baptizing by the Holy Spirit. I came with a doctrine about the Holy Spirit. I came to tell you that there's a Trinity at work, and that Trinity is at work involves God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can't have that teaching from any part of the Bible. So it's so simple. Man gets so wise, he causes you to stumble that he wants you to read the Bible and be like Mike. But I'm here to tell you I want to be like Jesus. Amen. You can't blame your pastor no. for something you call yourself but you refuse to participate in. Amen. You want to worm around, call yourself a Christian, and you ain't carrying, reading, studying, praying, and you ain't doing nothing towards what your salvation going to be? That's on you. Amen. But get on up out of my way now. Get on up out of my way, because see, I realize that every day that he wakes me up in time, I got to be in to understand, I need you. Yes, and I got to be in to understand, I need you, because where I'm working to go, I can't get there by myself. So I get up every day, and I work a little bit on it. While Satan and his world out there is trying to steal my attention in the time, in the life, in the soul to be restored, in the ransom that's been paid. While Satan trying to steal what Jesus came down to allow me the privilege, the grace, and the mercy to have. He will not steal it from me. Because one day at a time. I'm going to prioritize. And I'm going to put things first. Because we're in the short road now. And if you ain't seen the short roads, you don't understand what I'm talking about. Most people going to church don't realize yet they need Jesus. See, because I came to tell somebody, if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got a chance of holding or having the comforter. Uh, I'm not. See, if you ain't got Jesus, see, because it was Jesus that sent him. That's right. Jesus said, I got to go that he may come. Right. See, but if you ain't never tapped into what that comforter can do, mm. My Lord. I ain't talking to you. <laughs> I ain't talking to you. No. I'm not talking to you. See, because I learned some things. No one is the comforter. Mm -hmm. He don't. He don't worry about whether or not I want to talk about Christianity. Mm -hmm. The comfort of words about whether I want to be mm -hmm. Christianity. See, because if I got the fruit, and I'm showing the fruit, mm -hmm. if I got the promises, mm -hmm. and I'm showing the promises, if I'm living by the word that comes and proceeds from God's mouth, then I'm a light. You're a light. Uh-huh. 
But you, you can't tell me you sugar. And every time I look, you salt. <laughs> no, you, I, I ain't gonna confuse you like that. Oh, see, come. The Bible says, no them by. They saw it. Okay. That ain't what it said. Oh, that ain't what it said. Oh, that ain't what it said. The Bible said. The Bible said, no them by their fruit. We're in a time where it's dark out there. And every now and then, I ought to be able to see a light. Traveling through mm -hmm. with the fruit in the illumination of the Trinity of the God, hey, God's plan, Jesus' ransom, the Holy Spirit teaching. It was the Holy Spirit job now to advise the plan on earth. But but if I'm not going to participate in the plan, if I'm not going to stick my head in the plan. Then ain't no use of me putting my mouth on you, brother. See, because he not gonna require my soul through your soul. He gonna require my soul through my soul and what I did. See, so therefore, ain't no use of me standing up talking about you and you doing the best you can, and I'm doing nothing but running my mouth. I might as well go ahead on with it now. We're backing up now. <laughs> you got 2024, you got people that formed something in America called democracy. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand democracy? Democracy means that everybody sitting in here got a voice to participate in the laws that goes on in this country. They died for us to have the right that we ain't where we should be going, but we ain't where we were. Right. So I'm striving to get more, get more because I knew what where I was looked like. Mm -hmm. I don't look back, but I'm going forward. Yeah, right. But I ain't got a chance to do nothing if I'm not participating in nothing. Mm -hmm. If I'm not forming my voice, and you will say, I'm just one Jesus would just Jesus was just one. But Jesus said, listen, the Bible by the laws of the land. Give that to Caesar that belonged to him and give that to me that belonged to me. So if you got a right to have a voice, but you don't want to participate in what it is that your voice can say, don't talk to me about, I think this is too high. You ain't doing nothing. Get out of the way. And this is a do-nothing society. Right. They do nothing in the church. They do nothing out there but complain. This is too... Well, what do you... What do you reckon should be doing? Well, I, I think uh, we should do this. Well, did you put your voice in the bucket? Uh, <clears throat> well, no, I, I don't do that. Don't complain when you're not going to make a difference. Amen. Don't come and complain about that man or that woman over there when you are doing nothing, when you ain't got no message. You're not informing a message. You ain't got the power to be a message. You ain't got no kahunas to stand up and make a difference. You just you. And all you got is a demonic voice that makes you gossip about others and do nothing for nobody, not even yourself. To the world. He sent the light into the world for us to come out of darkness. He didn't send that light in the Old Testament. And Jesus didn't send the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. God didn't give us power to explain a mystery to us in the Old Testament. God didn't give us a right to be Christians in the Old Testament. No. Uh -uh. See, so it's safe for me to say to you, if I ain't got Jesus, I ain't 
got the Trinity. So who company you? Your, your denomination? Who company you, your pastor? I'm here to tell you, your pastor, not your denomination, not your doctor, not your apostle, can't come with you. Jesus paid the ransom. Yes. And if you ain't getting and got Jesus, if you're not assembling to practice Jesus, let me show you what you would do. Hey, sister. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Where you go to church at? Oh, I don't. Churches is messed up. Yeah. I don't go. I don't go to church. You don't go to church? No, no, no. I don't go to church because churches is messed up. Well, sister, I'm the one to tell you. You can talk about the churches all you want to, but the church is the way the gates of hell will not prevail against. And the church is what God the Father, through Jesus Christ and the gifting of the Holy Spirit, set up to be the last leg of the journey on earth. You say you don't go to church, so what you comparing whether or not you truly got Christianity or not? What you comparing what you think you got to? And how do you know whether or not you are practicing the right doctrine when you out there by yourself, looking good to yourself, acting by yourself, got proof for by yourself, and calling it like you want to call it, instead of letting the church let you assemble that you may practice till we all come to the unity and the knowledge of the Godhead. What? What it is? Who telling you how you salvation look but I don't need all that that's why you're by yourself that's right. Right. and you got a religious demon because mm -hmm. yeah. you're always right and everybody else is always wrong yeah, right. only the word is wrong Right. Only the word is right. So you sit over there like Lone Ranger, and even Lone Ranger had Tato. Uh, and Superman had Lois. Yeah. Even the world got sense enough to know you can't do it by yourself. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So you look. And we got a democracy going in the natural. And we got Christianity going in the spiritual. And the democracy going in the natural. And, and democracy is where people died to have a right to have better manifold wisdom, manifold wisdom. And so what happened? The young generation said, well, I, I just don't participate. I just don't participate. Well, you ain't got a voice. What it is you're not participating in is because if you notice, if you are not a participant, you don't participate in nothing. You just, you just, you just, you just talk. See, you don't participate in nothing. You just got that noise called gossip. Oh, yeah. And everywhere you stop at, you want to talk about somebody or somebody else because you all right. But you ain't got nothing to compare your all rightness to. See, when I'm in Christianity, I compare who I am to Jesus. I ain't got to compare myself to nobody sitting in this church. I don't care what you got to say about me. I care what he's got to say about Amen. me. So I have to learn to humble myself to understand that it's Christ and Christ alone that paved the way for me. And if I'll participate with him, you ain't got no business talking about Geno Jenkins. He have got an opinion. He is trying to do something. If you ain't going to do nothing, get your mouth off of him. Yeah. If you want to discern whether he right or whether he wrong, make sure you participate. Go ahead. Won't talk. Won't talk. You won't be back off there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So here's what I'm trying to say. When God made a plan. I want you to understand this now. Y'all ready? Yeah. The angels failed. Y'all ever thought about that? In the first earth age, the angels failed. Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. The angels failed. Then you come to earth and you got something called mankind and by the third chapter of Genesis, man fails. So you got the angels that fail, and you got mankind that fail. Who gonna fix it? God. 
So what did God do? John 3, 16 tells you. He said the blood of animal won't do it. It's going to take my son. It's going to take something that ain't tainted. That everybody can believe in. That can fashion and transform their mind around his mind. And that they can endure and live a life according to his mind, glorifying me in him by the work that I sent them to do. Huh? Huh? So, when you get down to Jesus, Jesus was the ultimate plan. That's why Hebrews 1 3 says he's speaking to us through his son Jesus, because Jesus is really the only way to the Father. The blood of animals couldn't get you there. No. It could not get you there. I'm trying to get the church to understand the simplicity of salvation. And God, what God is doing is in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Amen. And if my manifold wisdom is not coming from one that has the subject of Jesus Christ, I'm wasting my time. The prophets are considered to be in the Old Testament. There was one in the New. There was two really, Jesus and John. But they looked forward. The prophets of the Old looked forward and told us about Jesus coming. The ultimate plan, if I ask Ezekiel, Ezekiel, what you see in the future? Uh, prophecy says, prophecy says, that the Father has a plan in eternity. Mm -hmm. Prophecy says that his plan is coming to earth. Yeah. Prophecy said that his plan and the way to get to him and the way to be sanctified to him is through the Son Jesus. Amen. Prophecy says ain't no way you gonna come to God unless you come through him. Amen. Why do people wanna read everything else? But about Jesus. Anybody know? I can tell you. I can tell you. But I ain't want you to take it from me. Go to 2 Corinthians 4 4. Tell it. Let, let me show you something. Let, let me show you something. Now, read it real soon. I want you to hear this. What Satan is trying to blind your mind to. I want you to read it real soon. What Satan is trying to blind your mind to. 2 Corinthians 4 4 tells you what. Behold the God of this world has blinded the minds of them yeah. which believe not. Yeah. Read the next one. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The image of God shines in the believer heart. Yeah. And it just told you that Satan ain't trying to blind your mind to what the Baptist got to teach you. He ain't trying to blind your mind to what the Catholic got to teach you. The man just said, Paul just said to him, what Satan is trying to blind your mind to is the victory that Jesus slapped on Satan on that cross and in that tomb. And if you get that victory, you more than a conqueror. Yeah. If Christ be for you, then who can be against you? There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Can I get the subject of cross? Can I give you manifold wisdom today? Amen. So God is looking at you through his son Jesus and through Jesus' blood. And here you come. I was reading about Moses and Aaron and the blood they had went from Jesus. So how are you going to stand before God with the blood of animals when we are not in that season? How, how, how you going to do that? How you going to walk worthy of the ordained work that was given to you, made from Jesus, when you're making it from Aaron, Moses, Samson, Ruth, Boaz? You got every doctrine other than the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So if you got every doctrine other than the doctrine of Jesus Christ, where you getting your blood? Where you getting the stripes? That's required for your healing. 
When you get in the shepherd, gotta restore your soul. When you get that one according to Second Corinthians 2, I mean 4, 4, when do you get that image of the true God in your heart? And without Jesus, you cannot have the image of Jesus Christ in your heart because it takes Jesus to pay the ransom for the evil, for you to even be set free. call a tissue a tissue but it's not like mine I have to discern what's, how mine's look and what's mine mm -hmm. huh? Huh? Yep. Huh? so when people come up to me and tell me they are Christian mm -hmm. if they ain't for, <laughs> if they ain't for it, <laughs> like mine you ain't gonna be able to tell me just anybody is a Christian amen, amen. amen. Uh, you ain't going to be able to tell me that you will make the statement and belittle God's creation mm -hmm. and you a Christian. You ain't going to be able to tell me because anywhere you go, before you get a job, you give your record of what you know, mm -hmm. your credentials and what you know, mm -hmm. your training, your experience. Mm -hmm. In the American system, We ain't knowing people by their fruit. No. They plumb rotten. Amen. Don't know how to do nothing but insult people. Amen. Be little people. Amen. Take us back to the past. Amen. No wonder because even though they say that they are Christian, Satan can't do nothing new. He does the same Amen. thing over Amen. and over again. Amen. You can tell me you are Christian all you want to, but every time I look at your Christ record, I see you always doing something in the past. Amen. You can't give a Christian that witchcraft and mind manipulation because manifold wisdom of God is the highest wisdom in the land. And I got the wisdom that I may see things and call them what they are. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah, right. Oh yeah, I need to prove that though. I need to prove that. Let me show you man before the fall. When we go to Genesis 2, see, we go to Genesis 2, you know, God had a man made from the dust of the earth, sort of like me and you. God said, I want you to exercise manifold wisdom, Adam. I can hear Adam saying, God, what is it that you want me to do? You know I'm fresh from the dirt. Yeah. I didn't come to life till you blew your spirit in me. God said, I'm gonna exercise manifold wisdom, but I'm not gonna exercise it from me. I want you to exercise it from what I gave you. Amen. So God goes. Come back to Adam with this great big thing. Like that wide with a trunk hanging down, swinging like that, two tusks coming out. He looked at Adam and he said, What's that? Adam didn't look at him and say, Well, God, I don't know what that is. Adam looked at him and said, I'm going to call it Adam for you. God said, Good, go on, Adam. He goes right over here and he gets something with a neck on it as long as it's beautiful. That's about to do it. And here he come walking on them teeth. <laughs> like that. God said, Adam, come in. What's that? Giraffe. Adam said, I'm going to call that a giraffe. You will notice that Adam is using manifold wisdom before the fall. 
God didn't tell him or have to tell him what to call because he had manifold wisdom. He had the treasures of God. He could call it what it was. He was named all the animals. And all of a sudden, he had a problem. First idea he gets is, I need to wrap myself. He come here. We need to wrap ourselves in some big leaves. God told him to say, Adam, where are thou? Adam said, we heard you in the garden. We heed. Look at how dumb the boy got after the fall. God asked him a question. See, he didn't even question God before the fall. After the fall, God said, Adam, come here. What happened? Oh, no. A baby with a woman. The woman now got more sense. She in the fall, too, but she got more sense than Adam. She could tell God it was the serpent. Adam couldn't tell him nothing. Now, he done named out Adam. Amen. Amen. But after his fall, he became just as dumb as a box of rocks. Amen. <laughs> I don't want y'all to miss that. Before the fall, he had manifold wisdom that belonged to God, and God was you letting him use it because God blew into him. God created us with a heavenly call for us not to waste our time trying to be like the world when we are ones that was fixed to fix the world. When we participate in God's plan, we work in the invisible before it happens, and when it happens in the visible, we regulate it. That's what delegated authority to the church means, that Jesus gave his authority to the church. How the church doing? What happened at home? That's about time about like the church. That's time about like the church. You know why? Because they're not participating. They're not participating. You know why I preach like I preach? Because I got manifold wisdom to understand something on show. Here's what I understand. Here's what I understand. I got manifold wisdom to understand this. The manifold wisdom told me that in these last days. Now to the reader that seeks Jesus through the Holy Spirit can identify what in these last days mean. And if you identify that you're living in these last days, the first question that you should ask yourself is what am I? supposed to be doing to respond to God in the last days. I'm glad you asked. Matthew 24 says you should be living every day. As if it's your last. Because you don't know where time going to stop. Amen. Young man. Young man. That's young man. What's up? Go get her. I don't know if she was 50 years old or not. Started out one way and then turned from his ways and started down the right way doing it the good way. Bought him some equipment. Buying land, clearing land, selling lots. Out there in that heat. Working. Working, working. And time knocked on the door. Get off this machine. Come go with me. He didn't have time to say, wait a minute. He didn't have time to say, let me take my vehicle to the house. He didn't even have time to shut the machine off. Before time said, 
That's it. Your record now needs to stand for you. Man exists and tell me what he gonna do tomorrow when he don't know if tomorrow is he. What I'm worried about today is eternity, man. I'm not worried about what tomorrow gonna bring because if I got eternity, eternity will take care of tomorrow for itself. But if I go into death, when time ends and I ain't got eternity, my soul is in eternal damnation. So anybody in here know when time's going to end for them? And if you don't, how do you live in your life? Has society got you putting off everything you can do while you got time for another day when you don't have that? Unless God guarantees it. Because none of us in here knows when time is going to stop. None of us. But there's one guarantee. Every one of us in here, if you can see my fingers, was put in time to look towards eternity. That's the only purpose for man or woman in time is to look. Every day they get towards eternity. But Satan has done a good job bamboozling us to make us think we own time. When I get up tomorrow, when you do what tomorrow? When I get up tomorrow, oh God gonna guarantee you tomorrow when he told me, he said, where about today? Tomorrow take care of itself. I ain't even gonna scratch out to get to tomorrow. So today, if I get a little hot and I wanna go to the house, I look at that man and say, if you can't wait on me, get you somebody else. I'm going to the house. I don't work like this for you. Nobody else. And I go to the house and sit down. Want me to tell you why? Ain't but one thing God pushing me to do. To get my soul restored. That I can have eternal life. Tim, how do you think God feels? when he made every one of us in here. And we just take his word, the name of his son, the power of salvation, the power of the ransom blood. When we just take his stuff that he's given us to be in the earth realm, being a light to somebody else, that we may tell somebody else that they use a God, yeah. that we may tell somebody else that they can have salvation, yeah. and that the power of salvation is in the name Jesus. How does it look to God when he done sent his son to be beat beyond recognition and we look at it and just throw it to the side for temporary stuff that when we die, it won't even be able to go with us to the grave site. How does that look to God? That we take time for everything else. Get serious about everything else. But he most people are going to miss heaven sitting in church looking at that pool pit because they ain't never looked. For they sit at this thing right here. They don't know what it's like to call on the name of the Lord. We in the ultimate plan of God. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus allows us to have the comforter. Amen. The comforter reveals the word to us, the new plan to us, the new creation to us. Ain't there another creation? Ain't coming. The promise is made to us. The manifold wisdom is the treasures of God given to us through Jesus. That's why it empowers us to have. See, but we don't know enough about Jesus to claim the promises. So we don't know about enough about Jesus to, to illustrate the power. So we just take what the world and Satan brings to us. First thing I need to worry about is I don't need to be worried about what I was. 
I need to be striving for what I can become. Because time ain't stopped with me either. Huh? No. Mm -mm. If I'm attached to the true vine, John 15, what's coming through the vine going to hit me if I'm a branch? Huh? You know what I'm like? So if the vine is loving, I'm attached to the vine, I'm going to be like. If the mind, if the vine got the mind to carry out the Father's will, and I'm a branch attached to the vine, then I got the mind to carry Amen. out. Amen. The brother. Yes. So not only should my life speak Christianity, my mouth yes. should be a message yes. for the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. The brother. Amen. And when your heart is a message. Your mouth can't shut up. No. Huh? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Even in the wee hours of your house and it's cracking and you might have a little mystery going on with you that you don't understand what's going on with you and you don't understand that it's a test. Mm -hmm. To see what your mouth going to say and what your heart is holding. Because from the treasures of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So if it's in the heart, I'm here to tell you that when he come knocking with that test, the heart will speak in the name of Jesus. But if the heart ain't right and ain't nothing in it, and it's an empty sounding symbol, then you might get on the telephone and call somebody and tell somebody, pray for me. But if I'm a Christian, I got the same right to use the name of Jesus that you got to use. I ain't got to be trafficked. I ain't got to call, call up on the Empire State Builder. But if I know Jesus, I got a right to call a name that every power got to bow to. I can pray with you. But Paul and Jesus done prayed for me, so I'm going to pray for myself. They, if they my example, then I know how to pray for myself. I ain't got to get pretty. This ain't going to help me. I don't care what you think about how this look. I'm pouring my heart out here. And the best you can do is look at me and look at judge me by my outside. Then you missing the whole context. Also, that in the last days, promised time shall come. Mm -hmm. In Second Timothy, Paul predicts that the end time apostasy in the professing church and speaks of the fight that that love will be infected with what we today call modernism, liberalism, living like the world. Peter in the second epistle portrays the source of this apostasy to false teachers. He traced it to false teachers. Teachers. So they'll come tell you that we need to bring the prophet in the house. You need to bring Jesus. Amen. Because everything being done is through Jesus. All right. See, and, 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 and the prophet can come give you, the apostle can come give you a message. But if their message is not about Jesus, then you ought to get up and ease up the back door. Yeah. Because anybody that comes to you with any other doctrine, Second John 2, 9, anybody that comes to you with any other doctrine other than the doctrine of Jesus, why? Because Jesus is what God is doing. Yes. Can I get that through? Can I get somebody to understand that? Yes. Jesus is what God is doing. He devised the plan in heaven and sent it to earth. salvation. 
God planned for you for salvation. I didn't put you in Jesus. God did. I didn't ordain you. God did. Amen. I didn't ask you to walk worthy. God did. And here's the deal. With everything that Jesus did, he gave you the right to glorify God because he gave you the power to. He gave you the promises to. He gave you the substance to. Everything you need is in your heavenly Amen. Even the gift, the spiritual gift that you have, you participate in church by what God sent the Holy Spirit to give you. You can't participate in church without what the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12, if you want to check me. So when God put you in the body, the ultimate body, he asks you to walk worthy of it because principalities, rulers of darkness, Satan, and nothing he got can stand against the gatekeepers that practice righteousness, not denomination for righteousness. I know y'all think I'm crazy. But if you do, you better quit reading your Bible. <laughs> You better quit reading your Bible. Because I realized something. When it finished with Paul, let me say this, let me say this. When it finished with Paul, when Paul was finished and his work was doomed, God said, Paul, sit down, Paul. Come here, John. He said, I'm in prison. He said, come here, in the spirit. Mm -hmm. He said, I ain't finished with Jesus. He said, I ain't finished with Jesus yet. He said, there's some more got to be said about Jesus. He said, well, what you want to do? He said, I want you to get a book. I want you to call it Revelations. And I want you to write in that book what you see and where I'm going to take you to. He said, well, how am I going to do that? He said, I'm going to take you to the end of time when Jesus is getting ready to come back. And he grabbed hold to John and he took him and said, I'm going to take you forward to get you to look back. He said, and what you put in this book, I want you to give it to the church. To the who? To the church. Oh, you don't need to go in the book of Revelation. There is no time for no time. The first thing it says in Revelation 5, it says that only Jesus was worthy to open your mind to the seals of what's in that book. So Jesus is opening the believer's mind that goes into that book to see. And so one of the first seals, which means his mind, that he opens in your mind so you will be sealed with his truth so that that truth can set you free. One of the first things he opened Amen. is the enemy. What's the enemy doing? I'm in Revelation 6 now. Pew! 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 Who is this enemy? Look like the horse Jesus rides. Got a white horse just like Jesus. But he got a bow and arrow. Who shoots fiery darts? So let me see. There's seven seals, and God felt the need to tell John, to tell us, the first thing we need to know is that there's a demonic force in the earth realm firing, firing darts at our mind. <laughs> Them darts is hitting if you don't get what 2 Corinthians 4, 4 talking about. Say them blinding your mind to get you to run, you know, to, so you won't know the power of Jesus Christ. Huh? Huh? If you don't know the power of Jesus Christ, see, I can preach as hard as I want to preach, but the power you need is not in me. I'm just carrying out my assignment. The power you need. Now I can't get my hand down. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? The power all of us need is not in your denomination, not in yourself. It's in. You notice the earth realm is so quick to fall in love with man. Oh, with him. He ain't died on no cross. I asked the young man, I said, oh, do you vote? 
Oh no, I'm I don't do nothing like that. I said, uh, you talking about insurance prices? But you don't vote. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you something because nobody else is going to tell you they're just such a complaint. But I'm going to tell you. You ain't got a voice to say nothing. Because you ain't participating in nothing. Right. If they take us back to slavery days and you ain't never voted, you didn't have a voice to let democracy be erased so that we could be set back to where we was. You sought back. Let me say it again, because a lot of people don't understand me. When Jesus said, give that which to Caesar, give it to him. If Caesar gave you a vote, give it back to him. He said, because the, you to participate in the laws of the land. How you gonna participate in the laws of the land? You ain't got nothing but a grumbling mouth, but you ain't gonna vote for nothing. You ain't gonna participate in nothing. If you show me a person that won't participate in nothing, I'll show you a person that'll stand up and tell me they're a clown with a yellow suit on with black polka dot, and I'm looking at them in a three-piece suit, she's like, <laughs> they imagination got them fooled. They ain't participating in nothing. They ain't participating in they self. Amen. Don't miss me. The power is there. God ain't got no lack of power in 2024. We just not participating. That's right. We want to mad like we are. What did, I, what did I do with my Bible? Oh, I left it in the car. Well, what did you study? Oh, I, I don't do that. I just go to church and the pastor. See, we, in, 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 in. can I talk to you, man? <laughs> in, in manifold wisdom, manifold wisdom lets you start right here. But what manifold wisdom don't do is let you start right here. Manifold wisdom keeps you trapped, Lord. Keeps you evolved. Keeps you transformed by the renewing of your mind. You keep becoming new. When people see you, you're so new and shiny, right. that they'll look at you and say, what? on it. Let him put his timing on it. You just could obey. He said, I'm the way maker. Yeah. Just sit back and watch me. Don't get in no hurry. I'll make a way out of no Thank you to myself. How you doing? I'm questioning God. How you going to do that, God? He said, I already got it worked out. Thank you to myself. I don't see that. <laughs> but if you say so, I trust you. Amen. Don't thank you to myself. Okay. So then you come back to me. He said, you might well get your zeal back because I'm in the mood. I ain't understanding it all yet. But he's showing me. He's working it out before you. He's showing me the resources and how it's going to get done and what he's going to do. And I get excited. I said, God, I didn't know you were going to do it like that. He said, that's my church. He said, most people in that church worried about the number. 
He said, but the crowd ain't where it's at. He did. Oh, no. Amen. No, no. He said, that broad road, you better ruin it. Yes, sir. Because they ain't even on the doctrine. Yeah. You know what they preach? Fables. I ain't never seen so many fables. preachers preaching fables and anything like that. They ain't got a scripture. They ain't got nothing. <laughs> and they tell you, God, God don't honor man's word. Man honors God's word. Because God's word is God. I'm, I'm going to leave you right there. Stand for the glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bow our heads, Lord, to say thank you for what you've done in this place today. Father, we reach outside this building, Lord, because we know that you are omnipresent. You are everywhere. Yes. We ask that you stop by yes, Lord. the Murphy household. Yes, Lord. Lord, and give a touch of healing. Mm -hmm. Let her know your power, your healing, your promises is dead. Yes, All she has to do is reach up and get it. Yes, yes, Lord. There's nowhere she can go, not even in pain. Yes. That your presence is not there. You are the healer. Yes. Father, I ask, Lord, to not only stop by, but, Lord, look down at the ones that are supposed to be in covenant blessing with this church. Yes. How do they feel sometimes that they don't need to assemble? But you yes. said, for someone not, for sake not to assemble yourself, especially yes. as you see the time approaching. Yes. yes. So, Father, I ask, Lord, if we're not going to obey you because you know you wrote it all, you wrote the end and separated it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Father, you realize yourself what we need to get by. Yes. Help us, Lord, to hang on to abide and endure in these times. Lord, we thank the ones that had to give and the ones that didn't have to give. We thank those, Lord, that is a part of what you are doing through this little church. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we are still being able to reach over in Africa. Yes. And help the hungry, yes. the forsaken, the lost. Yes. Yes. Lord, to give them the message yes. that Jesus still saves. Yes. Yes. Lord, continue to help our struggle. Yes. Because, Father, it's not ours, but it's yours. Yes. Yes. Continue, Lord, to bring us from one day to the next. Continue to keep us in hope. Continue to heal us. And continue, Lord, to give us manifold wisdom. That belongs to you so that our vessels will be filled with the treasures of God. Yes. In the name of